Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the school year is starting back up, and that means that we're going to have teachers and students. And we know students are there uh, to learn, and teachers are there to teach. Uh, the book of Proverbs also is written and kind of is a reminder to us that um, we are all students, and we always have our teacher, our, our Lord, and our Savior. As, and teachers are really important, right? Kids and others too, but kids especially, students need teachers to instruct them, to encourage them, and even to tell them when they get an answer wrong so that they can recognize and learn uh, the right answer. If, uh, in most cases, it really wouldn't be smart for a student to ignore their teacher. And if a student gets an answer wrong, arguing about it won't be very helpful. It's usually much simpler and better to accept correction and learn. Our reading from Proverbs chapter 9 discusses wisdom and foolishness, learning and correction. And the first five verses, to, to preview, or review quickly, of Proverbs chapter 9, they're, they're a welcoming invitation to embrace wisdom, uh, to partake, to eat of wisdom, to drink of wisdom. The promise is, in those verses, that doing this is going to be to your benefit. Wisdom is pictured as a hostess who's prepared a party full of, of good food and drink, and she invites all those who will listen to join her and to celebrate and feast. Uh, the second half of our reading talks about a really essential feature of learning. I'm talking about correction. Verses 7 through 9 really describe the, the two different possibilities when it comes to correction. They, these verses say, Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebukes a wicked man incurs abuse. Do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. Uh, maybe kind of contrary to how we typically think of things, the person who thinks they don't need to learn uh, is the fool. And it's actually the person who's wise who keeps on being open to learning. And as you can tell, this is characteristic kind of, of Proverbs. There's two characters here. There's a mocker and there's a wise man. And these verses are kind of a, a riddle and they point out that correcting a mocker can be a waste of your time. You'll just be asking for insults. A mocker thinks everyone else is wrong, and what does a mocker do? A mocker mocks. They fa make fun of those who don't agree with them. And no matter what you tell a, a fool, they simply won't listen to you. Um, it doesn't matter how well informed or patient you are, someone who refuses to listen and has decided to do so, simply won't hear you. On the other hand, the, uh, those who learn wisdom accept discipline. Um, they, uh, that's the only way to gain correction, after all, is to endure correction and to learn from mistakes. Because, of course, we all make mistakes. It's learning from them that matters. Um, but those who are wise are always looking to add to their understanding. Well, as I said, the whole book of Proverbs, it's really an intriguing read. It's a little different. It's the, the way it works is, is a little different and less straightforward um, than the rest of the scriptures in, in some ways. But it, it often points out throughout Proverbs how being a fool, where does it lead? It leads to destruction. On the other hand, being wise tends to lead to good things, including a better life, a better neighborhood, and a better world. Um, God's rules are healthy rules. 
Now, um, God doesn't want us to lie, right, to murder, to steal, or commit adultery, because when you do those things, your life ends up as a wreck. Or even if it doesn't wreck your life, it's bound to wreck the lives of those around you. Adultery, for instance, it may not seem that bad to the person who's doing it. However, if you look at the hardship endured by abandoned kids and spouses, you can see just how selfish and destructive such behavior is. Crooks and scoundrels, whether they work on, wall, on street corners or Wall Street or online, leave destruction in their wake. And eventually, even if it's not until eternity, their treachery will catch up to them. On the other hand, there's few things better than you know, people who are doing the right sorts of things, friends and family who, who won't betray you, or a spouse who is faithful, or, or a congregation that supports you, or neighbors who help you keep your possessions and property and not look to take it away. Well, that's uh, why it's good to listen to God's rules, because God is the engineer and mechanic of life, you might say. I mean, he made us. He knows how we run optimally, and he knows what's going to work. He knows how the different pieces of our lives can best fit together, and, and what's going to help us, and on the other hand, what's going to hurt us. So he tells us. He instructs us on how to live. And as Proverbs, this book reminds us, it's best not to mock God or ignore him, but it's better to accept correction from our life. And after all, God cares about what's going on in our lives. Just like a parent has rules so that their child can have a good life, God has rules so that we can have a good life and a, and a good society. Parents, right, they don't just have kids and simply let them do anything and everything. They help them sort through emotions and teach them the right sorts of choices to make and, and how to navigate life and all the things that they're going through. And likewise, God didn't just kind of wind us up and then let us go. Like a parent, God continues to guide you and me. As Proverb puts it, wisdom calls out seeking to help us. Um, but what is wisdom exactly? Well, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 gives us an excellent start. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Um, wisdom is not just knowing stuff. It's not just knowledge. No, actually, wisdom includes humility and respect towards God, which in turn will mean respect towards others as well. And for Christians, uh, Jesus is, of course, the best teacher of all. And, and in places like Sermon on the Mount, he gives us instructions on things like how to love our neighbor or be true or be kind, all kinds of and, and much more specific stuff. Um, but the road, on the road to wisdom, there are some major obstacles, or we might say, there's road work, construction along the way. And that's because we don't like to be corrected. We all want to do it our own way. And Proverbs talks extensively, not just about the wise, but about fools. Fools in Proverbs are those who don't follow good advice. Fools are those who refuse to learn, who want to do it their way and ignore instruction. The truth is, we're all fools. People often don't want to learn wisdom or take correction because, well, it would interfere with their pleasure or convenience or prior commitments. Human beings don't always recognize the truth even when it's right in front of them. Every single one of us, for instance, we all broke our parents' rules. And I'm not just talking about the bad rules. We all broke our parents' rules, even the good ones. And every era, every single era in human history has had some, the rest of history looks back and says, what were they thinking? Mind-boggling blind spots and accompanying horrors. Uh, when God's wisdom became incarnate in Jesus, what did the world do with him? Well, we had a, one simple example in our gospel lesson. 
The world argued with him. They doubted him. They ignored him. They did not follow him. On Good Friday, it became shockingly clear that the world was full of mockers, but not that many who were wise. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd like to, and sometimes I think I play in a, a make-believe world where people just accept wisdom. I wish that others would accept wisdom, but then too, other people wish that I would accept wisdom and that I would come to reality with and to grips with reality and correction. Unfortunately, when we don't like something, we all find a way around accepting it. Our society is still filled with mockers at every level from every kind of people, including us. But what's worst of all is that we sometimes mock the gospel. God wants all of us to be saved, but sometimes we refuse to listen. And we can't always handle his correction or admit that we're wrong because of our pride. We refuse to confess our sins and we avoid admitting our fault. Even we as good Christians, we are often more concerned with being right than admitting that we are not. That admitting that we are not just in theory, but in reality, as one of our confessions of sin says, poor, miserable sinners. If we really believe that, if we are indeed poor in wisdom and, and prone to missing the mark, then Proverbs' warnings are extremely fitting for us today. His grace even washes over our stubborn foolishness whenever we turn to him and seek forgiveness. He cleanses and does indeed forgive us. God reaches out to our foolishness with a, a special sort of foolishness, the foolishness of the cross of Jesus Christ. When the world argued and attacked and rejected Jesus, God used it as a way to bring about redemption and salvation. If we are indeed fated to be fools, well, at least we can be fools of the cross. At the cross, after all, we are humbled and brought low, both by the sacrifice of our Savior and by the weight of our sins. But at the cross, we're also reminded that we are redeemed and restored, that what could have meant our rejection actually means our forgiveness and salvation. And that means that now you and I, we have a wisdom that the world does not have, a wisdom that regularly admits wrongdoing and seeks help from above, from our crucified, resurrected, and ascended Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.